Well, look at you. You are trucking on with your MISD transportation training. You're now at Module 4. Um, some of this that we're going to talk about is a little bit of review that we're going to highlight some things in our um, transportation policy um, handbook. But I want to try to take some of these laws and policies and give some real life application to it um, just to highlight some things that will hopefully um, echo in the back of your brain somewhere as you're traveling down the road realizing how important some of these things are and uh, will encourage you to maybe not cut corners or to observe laws a little more strictly or keeping kids in line um, for your future um, work here at MISD. And so uh, module four is about laws and MISD policy and it's going to be an application of relevant um, laws and policy in the MISD school bus. Us. Um, hopefully it'll be a relatively short video um, that you're going to look at here. Um, again, this is Jason Ewing. Um, I've had a good time doing these videos. I hope these have been informative. Um, hopefully this will be something you can go back and review over and over again during your tenure here. But uh, let's take a look at some of these um, laws. And I want to first uh, state um, where are we getting these videos from? Um, federal laws that regulate all states is called the Code of Federal Regulations, Title 49. And then secondly, we have state laws that regulate the state of Texas, um, which is which we get from the Texas Co Education Code, which is the TEC and the Texas Transportation Code. Now, I know you are just dying to go and inter look on the Internet and read all of these things. Listen, um, it's pretty stiff reading, but I do want you to know that these three areas, um, they have specific laws related to the transportation of school children and for school bus drivers to observe. And so based on these, hopefully you will find things that are consistent with these these laws in the Mansfield Independent School District Transportation Handbook. However, if for some reason you find a law that contradicts the Transportation Handbook, guess what you need to observe? You need to observe the laws. So if anytime you see a district code or a district policy or something in there, but there is a there is always a state law or a federal law. It will always take precedence over the school district. And so I just want to kind of give you a heads up that um, there's a lot of research and a lot of legwork that went into making sure that our transportation handbook is consistent with state laws. But I want to highlight some of these laws, especially as it's relevant to school bus transportation. First of all, um, you know cell phones are a big, big um uh, big, big newsmaker um, regarding um, texting and driving, um, all the accidents associated with that. Well, as much news you see that, as many times as you see those issues on the news, you need to elevate that for school bus drivers. And here we have a picture. This is not a MISD driver, by the way, of uh, a person looking at her phone um, and uh, videoing or, or somebody, a student with their cell phone actually took a picture of this or did a video of their phone um, with this uh, incident. And that's something that you need to keep in mind when it comes to cell phones. Not only is it dangerous for you to use, you need to be aware that all the students on your bus have cell phones and they are more than happy to know um, they have some leverage to be able to film and use that evidence and try to even make it say a story that may not even be true. So make sure that all of your conduct and all of your behavior um, is uh, is always in compliance with the um, transportation handbook. It's always courteous. It's always professional as much as possible. Um, and you need to always live like as though you're being recorded because the reality is you are. Because remember, our school buses do have video cameras, but there's a good chance that somebody on your school bus is watching you and really just wanting to try to find something to get attention about. And one way a student can get attention is if they catch a person um, in the school system doing something they're not supposed to. So let's talk about these cell phone laws a little bit more in depth. Um, first of all, the Texas Transportation Code says an operator um, may not use a wireless communications device while operating a passenger bus with a minor passenger on the bus unless the passenger bus is stopped. And so we talked about this earlier, that if you do need to use your cell phone, be sure and pull over and pull the emergency brake, put it in neutral, and turn on your four-way hazards. But as long as it's stopped, you may use that. Um, we already talked about some of the ifs, ands, and buts as far as re using your cell phone. Um, you know, don't you using it to 
check the time while the bus is moving. If you get caught with that, please be aware that that is a potential Class C misdemeanor. In Tarrant County, it can be a fine of up to $267, and there are three points applied to your commercial driver's license. And we'll talk about the point system here in a little bit more detail later. Um, potentially, here at the uh, Transportation Department, we could issue a verbal, uh, a written reprimand or a verbal rep reprimand. Um, there could be something we call CAP training. CAP training stands for a Corrective Action Plan, and that is just our attempt to pull somebody in so aside for training that uh, might be having a, a little bit difficult issue understanding a policy or a law, helping them get corrected and going, getting right in the right direction again. Um, there could be CAP training. Um, enlisted for you and if we continue to have problems or if you have too many points applied to your CDL that could result in potential termination so you don't want to mess around with this this is something that could come back with some serious consequences potentially um, some of the applications I want to highlight number one our policy states that an operator may not use the wireless device that is that law verbatim and then we state clearly if an emergency occurs pull the bus over to the side so um, I, I, I don't want to Reread all of this. We've talked about that, but just see that this is also in our policy handbook as well. And so we're going to ask you to um, uh, we're going to ask you to um, ha with the MISD bus drivers are printed to take your cell phone on the bus, but please do not use the phone for texting, for Google Maps, or um, uh, also checking out um, uh, your bus or anything as far as that is concerned. In addition to that, um, we want to talk about. Not just cell phone laws, but here's another biggie that we talked about with the policy handbook, and that is students standing with the bus in motion. Now, I recognize that you may be driving a school bus sometime that is overcrowded. In those moments and situations, your objective is to just get kids seated and as much out of the aisle as possible. This student right here, we can't have because they are not seated in what's considered a designed seat. That's in the middle of the aisle right there. We can't be driving down the road with a student standing like this. But like these folks right here, they have at least part of their body on a seat and we can truck on with that. We can't be driving around with students standing like this or even up in their seat, even though they're behind a seat. Um, this is something that is clear violation of two laws. First of all, um, let me back up here. I went too fast there. The Texas Education Code says standing children, a school district may not require or allow a child to stand on a school bus or passenger van that is in motion. And then the Transportation Code goes in a little bit more detail. It says an operator of a school bus while operating the bus shall prohibit a passenger from, watch this, standing in the bus, sitting, uh, or sitting on the floor of the bus or in any location on the bus that is not a designed seat. So they can't sit anywhere on the floor or a place that is not designed a design seat which means the aisle so we have to keep people um, seated somehow on that bus as best as possible again if you get pulled over for this and got cited for this this is a potential class c misdemeanor this could be potentially a 267 dollar fine um, three penalty points assessed to your uh, cdl license Again, rip, written or verbal re, verbal remand, reprimand, excuse me, and again the potential for cap training, which would be more training, extra training time to help work with you in in correcting the action that may um, or may not be um, something that uh, you're aware of. Um, here's some applications. Again, this is stated verbatim in our transportation handbook. But here's the bottom line: because kids all the time will ask me, "Why do I have? What's the big deal about me? As long as I'm behind the seat, why, why can I not stand?" Well, the first thing I tell them, it is the safety. It is a safety issue. Um, their seat belt is literally the seat in front of them. So if they are standing, it's like not having the seat the seat belt on. And so if there is a front end collision, the seat in front of them, or if there's a rear collision or a side collision, they're 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 basically encapsulated in, in a cocoon. And if they stand, that seat belt has been taken off. Secondly, it is a legal issue. It is against the law for you as a driver to transfer transport students when the bus is moving and the students are standing. So you need to tell them, look, you're asking me to break the law and I cannot do that. And the reason you will not do that is not only can it be assessed to your license three points, it becomes a safety, a financial issue because you have to pay the fine. And here's the worst part of it. 
you could lose your job. Now, let me explain why you could lose your job. You remember the last two um, laws we talked about, the cell phone issue and the um, seatbelt issue. It said that you could get potentially three points assessed to your CDL. Well, here's where the rubber hits the road on that issue. If you get to 10 points, you get an automatic suspension of your CDL and you not, cannot get that reinstated for over 10 years. So here's the problem. If you don't have a CDL, you don't have the capacity or the credentials to drive a school bus. So not only you're potentially losing that fine of $267, you could potentially lose your job and lose any future compensation for the next 10 years in relation to the school bus transportation industry. So um, we're just trying to help students understand, look, I'm here for your safety, but I'm also taking care of my family, but I'm also trying to take care of what's right and, and observing the laws because I want to be a good example to you as a student. And so that's where we can try to help students really understand that not only are they taking their own life in their hands, they are really um, messing um, with other people's lives as far as their capacity to have a job and even their financial capacity to provide for their family. So anytime that you're going to have an issue with students, I'm just going to say stop the bus and pull over safely. Um, if students don't comply, then please call dispatch and say, look, I've tried to tell these students to stay seated. They're not doing it and that you need assistance. And so I, I can't reiterate the seriousness of keeping students seated and out of the aisle as much as possible. Let's talk about railroad crossings. This is another biggie. Um, how in the world um, a person driving through a railroad track gets one part of the stop arm um, through one window and all the way through the other? is really beyond me and you see right here there's even a student sitting there and I hope and pray that student wasn't um, injured again this is not a Mansfield Independent School District but I want you to know that when it comes to railroad crossings this is a very volatile and dangerous area and so I want to review the laws with you here again the TRC is the transportation code first it says an operator approaching a railroad grade crossing shall stop no closer and this is relevant to school buses no closer than 15 feet or any farther than 50 feet an operator commits an offense if the operator drives around, under, or through a crossing gate or a barrier at a railroad crossing while the gate or barrier is closed, being closed, or being opened. So don't mess around. Railroad tracks is the bottom line. If you see that gate come down, you do not try to cross it until that thing is completely up. Um, also, transportation code continues there that the operator of a school bus before crossing a track at a railroad, watch this, shall stop the vehicle no closer than 15 or 50 feet from the track. While stopped, shall listen, look in both directions along the track for an approaching train and signals indicating the approach of a train and may not proceed until safe to do so. We're going to review our policy book here in a second because remember, we also say to pull the parking brake and put it in neutral. Um, these are very important steps we're going to ask you to include on our, on our um, policy and to augment this this law. The penalty for this is pretty serious as well. It's a Class C misdemeanor, 267 maximum fine, three penalty points assessed, a written or verbal reprimand, cap training, and then again possible termination, especially if that three points gets you over that 10 point um, cap on your CDL. Um, the MISD uh, Transportation Handbook makes it very clear. Not only are you to stop and look and listen, but we say to also place the bus in neutral with your airbag engaged at all railroad crossings. And we also include turning on the four-way flashers, which we need to augment this policy as well. But always make sure you pull that parking brake and put the bus in neutral at all railroad crossings. Look both ways before you cross that um, a railroad crossing at all railroad crossings. This is so, so important and potentially life life-saving as long as you observe these uh, potential issues. Um, if you are getting ready to cross a, uh, a, a railroad track and you notice that this crossing arm is starting to come down on you, um, let me give you some uh, words of advice. Number one, keep going. Uh, this gate will break away and it's okay. What you don't want to do is stop with your bus, any part of your bus on the tracks because you're worried about this gate. This thing is designed to break away, so just keep going. Do not ever stop on the tracks and do not stop within 15 feet of the tracks but once you are moving forward do not back up once you are on the tracks you keep rolling forward until your bus is completely cleared of the tracks um, I have not seen any incidents in, in Mansfield Independent School District where a, a bus has been struck by a gate but just be prepared that if that doesn't happen 
man, you just roll on through and then you need to stop and obviously report that you've made contact with something, but you wait and make sure until that bus is completely clear of the tracks. Now, if there's another incident that could potentially happen on your railroad track, and that is if your bus stalls out on a train, train, train track just like this. And what I want you to see is a train is coming from the, from the west to east direction. You're driving from the south to the north. Um, you have obviously observed, you've seen that, hey, I can, I've pulled my parking brake. I've put it in neutral. I've looked both ways. My emergency hazards are on. I looked and I listened and you start to clear, go over the track. But all of a sudden your bus just dies right here. Well, what are you going to do? Well, we have a stalled bus here approaching train. The first thing you need to do is without any hesitation is evacuate the bus immediately. Once you evacuate the bus, you need to give clear instructions to the student to evacuate and move away toward the bus, or excuse me, toward the direction of the, toward the train that's coming and away from the train. So you're going to move to a safe location as far from the tracks as possible and move away from the tracks at an angle in the direction of the approaching train to avoid flying debris in the event of a collision. Um, some might mistakenly think running away is the best way to go, but again, if this train hits this bus, all the debris is going to shoot this way. So if you're moving uh, toward the train and away from the tracks is where you want to go. Now, please don't send half of your students one way and half of your students the other. Just get off the bus and try to find a designated location that's visible and understandable to get them all to one spot as quickly as possible. Um, so let's be careful of that. Now another thing we want to observe here, and this is more of a courtesy um, so that we maintain a, a, a pretty good reputation in and out of our school district, is to try to do our best to use the right lane uh, of the roadway. Um, Anytime you see multiple lanes ride this, whether around like this, whether it's be on Cooper or Sublet or 287 or whatever it is, we want to be occupying the right lane as much as possible. There are times that you can use the left lane, and we'll talk about that. But if you're going to be driving down this road, any road for more than a couple of miles, and if it's a multi-lane multi road, get over in the right lane so traffic can go around you. Not only is it a courtesy issue, I do want you to know that it is kind of a law. Uh, Texas Transportation Code says an operator of a vehicle on a roadway moving more slowly. And guess what? Buses, especially on highways is and, and MISD, are the slower moving vehicles because highway speed for our buses is 50 miles per hour. So you always want to stay in the right lane. In addition, when we're on Cooper or Sublet, we should be the slower vehicles anyway because of all the stops and all the starts that we're making all the time. So by law, all uh, vehicles that move more slowly than normal speed of other vehicles at the time and place under the existing conditions shall drive in the right-hand lane available for the vehicles or as close as practical to the right-hand curb of an edge of the roadway unless the operator is, and here's your exceptions, if you're passing another vehicle that's going below the speed limit or if you're preparing for a left turn in an intersection or into a private road or driveway. And so just out of common courtesy, to observe this law, the common practice for MISD school buses is to maintain the right lane as much as possible, except when we're preparing to turn left, or except whenever we're behind a vehicle that's going below um, the posted speed limit. Um, if you you can get potentially um, fined and cited for this as a Class C misdemeanor, I know that sounds ridiculous, but it is an, a, a it is a movable offense. Um, Two hundred sixty seven dollar fine. Again, three penalty points assessed. Potentially a written reprimand. And uh, potentially cap training. Um, this is kind of a rare thing that we've seen enforced around here, but potentially what we want you to understand is, is we need to keep the right lane occupied as much as possible. And so please stay in the right lane as much as possible. Here are the exceptions. If you have to use the left lane to plan a left turn appropriate with traffic congestion and road conditions, that could be up to a mile in advance. Um, use left lane for passing when a vehicle in front of you is driving below the posted speed limit. Here's another occasion that I want you to see here. Um, this might be two turning lanes right here, okay? Um, and then this one is to go straight. Well, you are you whenever you turn and you see multiple turning lanes, again, stay in the right lane anytime you are in multiple lanes that you are using. And as you make that right turn, stay in the continuing lane that this is going into, lane two. So this is lane one that continues. This is lane two. If this lane turned right here, which it wouldn't, um, you would turn right here and this would continue into lane 
lane three. So always imagine the dotted line for your lane is continuing into the next section from one place to the next. If this vehicle needed to turn right, that legally would be the correct lane, which is this right lane, because this line here attaches to that line if you did an imaginary line there. So my point is, is you're always staying in the right lane, even when you're in multi-turn lanes. But watch this. You turn down here and you're down the road here. Once you establish yourself in this lane, then you need once it's clear and safe, you need to move over to the right lane and maintain your right lane um, occupation for the sake of uh, safety, for the sake of uh, uh, courtesy, but also for the sake of observ observing laws because um, you are typically the slower moving vehicle. And now above all. Uh, let's talk about accidents in regards to hit and run laws. Um, boy, this is a pretty serious incident. Um, even if it's just minor, minor damage, if you just very minimally tap something and you don't stop and report that, there's potentially some serious uh, consequences here. And so I want you to see that we have three sections of the transportation code that I want to cite here. Number one, it is illegal to leave the scene of an accident where you were involved that results in the death or an injury of a person. Um, that's a big no-no. It is illegal to leave the scene of an accident where you're involved that results in damage to a vehicle that is attended or striking a vehicle that is unattended. So if you hit a v another vehicle, you can't leave that scene. And then it is illegal to leave the scene of an accident where you are involved with that results in striking a structure, fixture, or highway landscaping. So if you hit another, so we're talking about hitting a person, hitting a vehicle, or hitting any structure, you cannot stop and leave under any of those circumstances. Now, depending on the damage, depending on the consequences, whether it be death of an injured person, there is some serious consequences, especially if you could have face up to a $5,000 maximum fine. If there is a death of a person, that's a third degree felony if you hit and run. If you hit a person or injure them, it's a second degree felony. Or if there's less than $200 of damage in a vehicle like we see here, that would be a class C misdemeanor. A Class B misdemeanor, if there's more than $200 damage to your vehicle, again, three points applied to your CDL, obviously a written and cap training and possible termination. Um, so I want you to see how serious that is. So the bottom line is, as we reviewed in the policy handbook once again, if you are involved in an accident um, or if, you, if there's any issues in there, uh, we ask that you make any kind of accident contact with any person or object please stop the bus check for injuries call for 911 if you have to call the MISD police if you have to dispatch radio if there are students on the bus you have to fill out a seating chart and then if you're waiting for somebody to come out and release you man get that seating chart filled out so you're not having to wait all day um, you're gonna have to wait long enough for us to show up anyway to come out and do an investigation even if you're hitting a stop sign up or something like that we have got we have just got to get that seating chart filled out um, part of the reason is is that we do have children that will go home and, and claim to their parents that they they have were involved in a bus accident and then if that child wakes up the following morning claiming they have a headache or a neck injury that parent is going to assume it's associated with that accident and so that seating chart will help us to provide a ready defense for you for the school district and to get a more accurate detail of what actually happened uh, again do not move the bus until you release by a police officer a safety trainer or dispatch and then be sure and review the accident procedure and MIC transportation handbook on page 13 well, that's going to kind of do it right now for uh, Module 4. Um, this was kind of just a, a lesson of some serious application of laws and policy and handbook. And then just help you kind of understand some of the seriousness associated with these laws. Uh, we're not just asking you to keep kids seated or because we think it's uh, a fun rule to have or to not use your cell phones. Um, there's real serious consequences associated with that. And we hope that this will help you um, just find extra motivation to observe laws and policies in our handbook. Thank you for watching module number four. Truck on with your training. We're so proud of you. You're doing a great job and keep up the good work.